morning or what? Uh, yes, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll, I'll use the mic for what? I thank, thank you very much for inviting me. It's always uh, kind of difficult when you're a pensioner to be woken up in the morning <laughs> because, quite frankly, you don't know what um, you're supposed to do. Um, normally, when people invite me, I will say, is there someone who's going to provide tea or coffee or breakfast? Because I don't pay for those things. That person must pay because I'm a pensioner. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yeah. I grew up at a place called the Engadja. <laughs> <coughs> so now there, there's this area where we had living amongst white and black people, they would mix now and again. So at the age of seven, all of us have to go to school. So, of course, our school was the local church. So you go to the church, and that's a school. So he had to go to a place called Melmoth. So before that, he could come to our house, eat, and do all sorts of things. And he went to his school in Melmoth. During Easter time, he comes back. And mom says, hey, 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 come, come in, Peter. Well, why are you standing outside? He says, we were taught that black people's houses have got germs, so I shouldn't go in there. So that was my first encounter of interesting things in life. But it, as the years went by, he said, he made a good statement to me, and he said, uh, why are you going to school? Because whatever you do, what, how, however hard you study, I will always be your boss. So, so if, if you're not careful, society starts categorizing you and compartmentalizing you and giving you a tag of who you should be. And it is up to you whether you start embracing that one as me, as you, as what I'm going to become in life. Because if you start absorbing these things and you say, that's me, then there's, a, there's an issue that has to be spoken about. Not spoken about. But here is the thing, you know, in my life, and I've had many, many, I'm not kidding, I, I have lived many, many years on, on earth. Uh, so I'm gonna say this. I now truly believe that everyone, when they are born, they come to this earth with something. No one comes here with nothing because someone who's here has to do something, has to fulfill a particular responsibility or function on earth. So it depends on whether you do understand what you're here for or someone assists you to unleash what you have or to know or to find out what it is that I have. So, um, I have a very interesting uh, rabbi friend, a Jewish rabbi. He said to me, you know, Sipo, what you must realize is that when kids are born, and I can't claim to know more about those things because I know nothing, all of them, they come out with their, clenched, their, their fists clenched. But when a person dies, his hands are always open. So it means when you come in, well, it's just a, an example, it's not, say, it's a, it's not scientific. So don't write it as, and say, this is now scientific, you can't be something. No, no, no. It was his way of telling things, you know. So, so I, I honestly believe that everyone on earth who comes in, comes with a seed. So it depends on what happens to this seed. You know, the environment you grow up in tends to shape you, tends to mold you, and guides you whether to plant the seed that you have or to hold on to your seed until you die or to give it to someone else because you cannot use it or just just to know nothing, just, just to walk around thinking I have nothing to offer in this world. 
But the truth of the matter is, and I truly believe this, so you can believe it if you want, don't, if you want, if you don't, it's okay. But everyone has got something to offer. Now, you've got to find the good soil for your seed. Because you may choose to plant your seed in a place where it's not going to help you, it's not going to grow, and it, you, you cannot nurture this thing, and it's going to die. But others will choose the right spot. Then I've said to you, the, the environment tends to shape you. Your parents tend to shape you. The people you interact tend to shape you. There are those that you're going to meet that are going to encourage you. Because everyone, meant, hey, you know, this thing of mentorship, you get mentored negatively or positively in life. Every time you, you have a mentor. So there's a mentor who's going to say, you're useless, you know, you're cursed, you're nothing, you know. Um, and that's your mentor. So you could easily believe your mentor. There's another mentor who could say, wow, you're an amazing person. You could do anything in life. Just plant your seed well. Just plant your seed well because you've got it. You know, other people, you know, they do all sorts of things. They plant their seeds today. And you can get opium today, tomorrow. Others plant berries, and you know, you get all sorts of things. But plant the seed, that's the most important thing. Because if you don't plant your seed, you will die with your seed. And you know, the, the danger with um, dealing with uh, society or the environment is that it can cast you into a place. Have you ever seen people, um, and I, I, I'm just using this one as an example, so don't make it a, a, a scientific issue. So it's kind of like, you know, there are people who beg on the street and then you give them something, tomorrow they come and beg on the street. You give them something, you beg on the street. I have done some experiment, which is true. Can I give you a job so that you work and do something with your life? How much are you going to pay me? So I said, uh, you know, this is what I think you, uh, you should be paid. And over time, I will give you something. No, 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 I make more money by begging. I make more money by begging. It's so already you have cast yourself in that mode where you see yourself as someone who are perfecting this thing of begging. And you become an entrepreneur insofar as begging is concerned. Because that's what it is. You make your living through that. So someone else wants to give you dignity. And you say, ah, you can keep your dignity. I will always say, hey, I, I need somebody. I need something, I need something. You know, when you, when you do something, and my wife was telling me that my time is getting bigger, and I need to go and, and exercise. You see, when you do some exercises, or do something, you develop a strong muscle. That muscle grows. So, as you start something, you fail today, you succeed, you fall, and you stand up, you go forward, you develop a muscle, and you develop the skill to deal with those things. So, in your field of begging, in your field of asking for sympathy all the time, and saying, oh, Pretoria must provide, government must provide. I mean, I see people, who've been given houses, RDB houses, and they walk into houses and say, but it's too small. But you pay bagger off for that thing, but you say it's too small. And, and a person sits in that house and a window gets broken, and a year passes by, and he says, government has not come to fix this window, because you've perfected that kind of stuff, that you've developed a muscle which which is wrong, which helps you to see things in an incorrect way. So, enough about the seed, enough about developing your skill, developing your muscle, and not allowing people to shape your thinking, but allow positive um, energies to, to, to shape you. Um, 
And, and by the way, being an entrepreneur, there's no, there's no time frame. It doesn't mean that I only, well, I, I, it's true that if you're a younger person, you're, you're better off. You really are better off because you have no other responsibilities. But you can be an entrepreneur anytime. I mean, if you think of uh, a, a silly example, Barack Obama retired when? At 51? 50. So his career, so far as president is concerned, is finished. So Donald Trump started at what age? 70 years old. And he's, he's shaking the world at 70 years old, you know, whatever he's doing. So don't wait and say, oh, I've passed my whatever time, so now I'm OK. And, and, and now I'm, I'm old, you know. Because um, I mean, one of the things that I used to worry me uh, for being becoming a pensioner is that you know what when you become a pensioner the word suggests that you're done so if you 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 went on pension at 60 so even though you have you're supposed to live until 90 you're done so you're ready to die because there's, there's nothing else you're supposed to be doing because you're dead so it's those little things that are are quite important um, in life. So I just want to close by making two points. All great entrepreneurs are serious problem solvers. All great entrepreneurs are serious problem solvers. I mean, I can tell you now, if you go back to the end of um, the, the Second World War, uh, and you look at what happened, and you look at, even in the Americas, uh, at the end of the, the Civil War, you look at the emergence of people like Rockefeller and all the other guys. All of them happened because they solved problems. And, and the people that you have today dealing in the Bill Gates of this world were solving problems. So don't mimic anything that you just see on Earth. Uh, because we can easily mimic everything. Um, if a tender, a tender story is a big thing, even kids, they say, what are you going to be, my child? What you gonna I want to be in the tender business. I want to be in the tender business because they mimic society now. They, uh, they, they, they don't believe that they have something unique because everyone has got a seed that is unique that you still need to plant on Earth. So that's the point that I want to make. This, the last one is the bad thing about us is that we end up becoming consumers if we can't do any other thing that is positive on, on problem solving and we become consumers. You know, a person becomes, you get born by your parents you use diapers that are created by other people. Yeah, they are not from you or of you. Uh, you go to, you, you wear clothes designed by other people. You go to school, you read a book that is written by someone else. You graduate. Uh, you say, I've got a pension certificate. You go to university, you continue reading what other people have produced, but you have nothing to contribute. You've contributed nothing. And then you look for a job. We employ you in a company that I have created because well, now you don't want to use your seat to do something for yourself. And you'll be watching on TV, they will say, um, and you know, there's a funeral cover. You need a funeral cover. Funeral cover, and then you end up buying a funeral policy, which is designed by someone else and you consume that one and one day you die and someone else will create a coffin for you and you'll be buried in someone else's brains and someone else's thoughts and then you say to yourself what was the purpose of me being on earth if i didn't and i couldn't exercise or use whatever i had thank you very much <laughs>